that's the wrong key. Woke up this morning with my mind stayed on spirit. Woke up this morning with my mind stayed on spirit. Woke up this morning with my mind stayed. and talking with my mind stayed on spirit walking and talking with my mind walking and talking with my mind stayed on spirit hallelujah hallelujah Hate your neighbor with your mind. Stayed on spirit. Can't hate your neighbor with your mind. Stayed on spirit. Can't hate your neighbor with your mind. Stayed on spirit. Hallelujah. Woke up this morning with my mind Stayed on spirit Woke up this Stayed on spirit Woke up this morning with my mind Stayed the clapping. It helps since we don't have drums today. I like how it says hallelujah. <laughs> I'm choosing heaven today. I'm choosing heaven today. I am walking the road of heaven right now. Singing I'm choosing heaven today. I'm choosing love today. I'm choosing love today. I am walking the road. Love today. What's next? I'm choosing joy today. <laughs> I choose to know. Yeah. I am walking the road. Let's choose compassion. I'm choose compassion. Walk in the road of compassion right now. Singing, I choose compassion today. Let's choose heaven one more time. I'm choosing heaven today. Nice. I'm choosing heaven today. Heaven right now. Singing, I'm choosing heaven today. I'm choosing heaven in heaven today. Mm, yes. Woo. Yes, give it up for our very own Marie Ann Jaime. <laughs> Good morning. I have a center for spiritual living. Ahava is the Hebrew. Oh, good morning. Ahava is the Hebrew word for love, and we gather together every Sunday, knowing that love is always the answer. That's right. I am Reverend Rainbow, your spiritual director, and so grateful to be with you on this glorious Sunday. Happy to be here. We are a conscious community committed to curiosity, so that we may provide a loving space to be reminded of the truth of who we are. 
We are an open and affirming community, so whoever you are and wherever you are on your spiritual path of discovery, know that you are absolutely welcome here, yes? Let me do this. If you're joining us online, thanks for being a part of our online community via live stream. Uh, let us know where you're tuning in from today, whether it be down the road in your jammies or across the world. We are grateful to be able to have this offering and love stream Ooh, around the world. You I like that? It. Yes. And if you're in the room, we encourage you as well to take out your phones, take pictures, little videos of service, check in on social media, let your friends and family know where the love is today. You just might want to silence it first. Little tip there. Um, and if you are joining us the first time, whether in the room or online, uh, we would love to welcome you and let you know that your presence here makes a difference. So do we have anyone here? I know I saw a few folks. Um, we just ask you to raise your hand or, or stand up if you're willing. We can say welcome if you're here for the first time. Welcome. Yes. <laughs> yes. And um, we have a special gift for you that you can get in the bookstore after service. You may have received a connection card when you came in. If not, one of our core council members can get you one of those and take it to this room right there to get your welcome gift after service. Let's see. Yes. We are so grateful for the many hearts and hands who come together to create this community. So I want to take a moment just to acknowledge all of our volunteers. And if that's you, you can give yourself a pat on the back. And everyone else, let's give some love to our volunteers. Thank you, thank you. Yes. And now is the time in service where we remember that truly we are one and we are a reflection of one another. So I invite you to turn to someone, maybe with your hands over your heart, and say thank you for being a reflection of me. Thank you for being a reflection of me. Mm -hmm. And we have an amazing vision and purpose here. And so I invite you to repeat after me. We are an inclusive community. We are an inclusive community. Committed to global transformation. Committed to global transformation. Through personal evolution. Through personal evolution. That's right. And our purpose, let's do this one together. Are you ready? Wake, Wake up, up, step up, up, and make a difference. That's right. Today's affirmation is coming, maybe. <laughs> Yes, I will read it once and then let's state this together. I move beyond judgment and embrace active compassion. Ready? I move, I move beyond, beyond judgment, judgment and, and embrace, embrace active, active compassion. compassion. Yes. We're going to be talking a lot more about that today. Don't you worry. <laughs> okay. Hmm. So we have a couple of uh, community announcements, excitements, things happening. So I want to take a minute now and acknowledge that Clayton and Lindsay had a beautiful little baby girl named Josie. So congratulations. Welcome our newest Ahavian. Um, they are at home uh, during this time. But we want to let you know that there's a couple of opportunities to support them. So one, you may have noticed a beautiful basket out in the community room. If you have um, any gifts, donations that you would like to make, cards, um, for the family, you can leave those there. And um, what they've asked for is that they could really use some support around meals right now. If anyone has uh, remembers, if you ha have been around a young child during that time, uh, or rather when a new baby comes into your life, they take 100%, if not 200% of attention, and finding the time to cook for yourself can be challenging. They are also committed to eating vegan, and so that um, is something that we would like to support them with. So our practitioner, Patty Cooper, set up a meal train, and we put the link to it 
in our uh, Facebook community group, but you can also reach out to one of us and we'll help you figure out where to get that link if you're not on social media. So they are requesting meals and then we would love if anyone wants to donate and support their family with gifts and other beautiful bounties to welcome this child into the world. Now I'd like to invite up Heather Russell, and she is going to give a little testimonial about an opportunity that starts tomorrow. Is this it's on? on. Okay. Yes. Grand Rising, everyone. <laughs> so the um, Art and Science of Spiritual Mind Treatment class starts tomorrow, and Rambo wanted me to do a little bit of a testimonial because I've actually taken it multiple times. Um, I've taken the class, the original class was called The Power of Your Word through CSL with Reverend Uglad of Puerto Rico. And then I had, when they redesigned the curriculum two years ago, I with this new class, I took it with Louise. So the spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer, if you prefer, they're used interchangeably in the Science of Mind textbook. Which, so whichever works for you. It is one of the main tools of this teaching, hands down. If you, if you don't take any other class throughout the year, this is the one to do because... It's kind of like, for me, it's a, it's a beautiful blend of psychology and spirituality because you're doing the work in your own mind. You're getting right with your own thoughts, which is the conduit to spirit to manifest whatever it is into your life. I kind of liken it to like, if, 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 like cloud computing. You know, if your brain is a, is a, a, ter a terminal running human.exe <laughs> and, and accessing you know, the, the divine server out there mm. in the cosmos, a spiritual mind treatment is kind of like running Windows Diagnostics or doing a DIST defrag. It, it I love, you're talking to some, some, yeah. You're connecting with some of our text folks here. I love it. Yeah, so, so really, you, know, you got you to defrag your own mind here to keep yes. your machine running smoothly so you can you know, stream those divine downloads from the cosmic server that is spirit. Yes. So... Yeah, so, and again, you know, this, this is one of those classes I've, t I've taken multiple times because it's useful to learn from different teachers or even from the same teacher. You might pick up something new and different each time you take it. You know, it's all about, you know, you're getting right with your own thoughts and it, it, because everything starts there. So. Yes. Thank you, Heather. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. The class is offered hybrid, meaning those that want to gather um, in person, we will be here, but it's also online, and we have people from various locations that will be joining online um, as well, and we have um, payment plans and scholarships too, so just reach out if you're interested, and you can sign up on our website as well. So let's now take a deep breath. <sighs> as we move into our centering our centering song and prayer, which will be led this morning by practitioner Marie Ann Jaime.
breathing in and out, feeling God in this moment, closer than hands and feet, God is, life is, love is, joy is, peace is, abundance and grace and wholeness is, health, wholeness, that is what I am, that is who we are, that is what we are embodying in this very moment. Everyone who is here and watching and feeling our vibration right now. This is the vibrational reality of this moment, that love is unconditional and who we are. So I'm so grateful to bless this service, knowing that this is the truth and knowing that everything that comes from this moment is God-ordered and God-ordained. So thank you, God, for this divine appointment that we have answered the call today to be who we are becoming and becoming who we already are. Whew, all is well. Thank you, God. I call it good. Good morning. The reading today was written by the Reverend Dr. Bob Lucan, and it was originally published in Science of Mind magazine Daily Guides, June of 2019. Love others. They are your breath of life. Love the past, the present, and the future. Be the children who fall to their knees on the power of their own laughter. Be the song every lover hears in the passion of a perfect union. Be the leaves on the tallest tree that long to fall and kiss the ground. Be the love that bends hard corners into hearts and clouds into pillows. Love the ego you have abandoned along with all the disowned parts of yourself and others. Love everything you touch and everything you see. There will never be a better time for love than now. There has never been a person better designed for loving. If you have been afraid of love, start slowly and love small things. Love a sparrow, a puppy, a distant rainbow, or a gentle summer breeze. Love a song, a line of poetry, and the look on a child's face while eating ice cream. <laughs> If you can love a morning sunrise and an evening sunset, you can love the clouds that fill the sky. If you can love one star, you can love the night. When there is nothing you have not loved, lie down and sleep. Dream the dreams that lovers dream. And the last line says, you are awakened. And I'd like for us all to say, we are awakened. We are awakened. Thank you. Have you ever felt like nobody was there? Have you ever felt forgotten? In the middle of nowhere 
Have you ever felt like you could disappear? Like you could fall and no one would hear? So let that lonely feeling wash away Maybe there's a reason to believe you'll be okay Cause when you don't feel strong enough to stand You can reach, reach out your hand And oh, someone will come running And I know they'll take you home Even when the dark comes crashing through When you need a friend to carry you and when you're broken on the ground, you will be found. So let the sun come streaming in, cause you'll reach up and you'll rise again. Lift your head and look around, you will be found. You will be found. You From across the silence, your voice is heard. And oh, oh, out of the darkness, the morning is breaking. And all is new, and all is new. Feeling of the end. And suddenly I see that all is new, that all is new. Even when the dark comes crashing through, when you need a friend to carry you, when you're broken on the ground, you will be found. So let the sun come streaming in, cause you'll reach up and you'll rise again. Lift your head and look around. to carry you when you're broken on the ground you will be found so let the sun come streaming in cause you'll reach up and you'll rise again lift your head and look around Take a deep breath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful reminder, right? We are not alone. Whatever um, we may be going through, right? As I've been saying, it's temporary. It's temporary. We will be found. That light, again, will resurface. 
and we will be renewed. We'll be different based on what we've experienced. So hmm, thank you for opening our hearts this morning, Marie Ann. So we are um, continuing on our theme here, gentle, giant gentleness. And I want to uh, give a shout out. Thank you to Reverend Chris, who filled in for me last week and introduced this topic. Um, is she great or what? Yes, yes we love them. So um, Reverend Chris reminded us the value of being gentle with ourselves, right? And that we have value um, just for existing. Imagine that, right? Like there's nothing we have to do or produce or create to prove our worth. So that is something that I think uh, we could be reminded of regularly as it is easy to forget and get caught back up in the world and what the world has to tell us as opposed to remembering that truth from within. So... Today, we're diving into this idea of loving the other and how to be gentle giants within the relationships of our lives, the relationship with ourselves and the relationship with others. So how many of you are fascinated by people like I am, right? Do you like to people watch or people, you know, just why and how people respond and do things, I find it extremely fascinating and, and curious, right? Um, love going to places like, you know, when traveling or at the airport is a wonderful time to people watch and just see how people engage and, and interact. So we, uh, I love people. And it is especially easy to love people when they are kind and loving and graceful and show up exactly how we want them to show up, right? That's easy. But the thing is, people are complex. We are complex beings with a vast array of emotions and things going on. We can be fickle, we can be opinionated, we can be judgmental, we could be controlling, we can be spontaneous. So that's just how we are. And sometimes being human means all of these things and we can't really help ourselves. But that's when things can get a little messy when people are showing up in a way other than how we would desire them to show up. And we start to blame the other for things that are occurring or going wrong when in fact it's our judgment of others that gets in the way of our harmonious, loving, ideal relationships, right? It's our judging their behavior as being bad or wrong as opposed to just accepting their humanness and allowing the grace that we would desire others to give to us, but we must first allow that space and grace for others in our lives. So applying gentleness and curiosity in our interactions, in our relationships with others, this requires allowing others to be their unique, quirky, loving, creative selves. And it is from that place, once we can get to that place of accepting people just how they are, it allows us to see more clearly what's really going on. And often, it's that mirror. And what's really going on is something within us that is seeking to be healed or known, witnessed. 
So our relationships are often the place that can challenge the very foundation of what we think and know to be true about life. They can challenge the very foundation of our spiritual groundedness or our principles, right? And it calls us to go deep into our own spiritual practice on a very fundamental level. So we can say and know these kind of platitudes of we are one, we are all love, love is always the answer. But what does that really look like when the rubber meets the road? And we are just up to here and blah with people. So this teaching shows us that our relationships are a mirror. Life is a mirror reflecting back to us our own ideas and beliefs and judgments. So the only place really which we can start this healing journey of harmonious relationships is within. Being angry or hurt based on the actions of another person is part of the human experience. So I'm not saying that you're never going to be upset or you'll get to this point where everything is just, ah. Uh, while we are living this life and doing this dance of humans, humaning in relationship with other humans, there is going to be plenty of opportunities to practice, to practice witnessing and allowing those feelings of anger or hurt, betrayal, sadness, along with those feelings of joy and bliss and ecstasy and peace. So the key is to release our judgments and attachments, thinking that it should always look like this or be like this, or that the other person should be or do something different than they are. I'm not saying this is easy, y'all. This is definitely my work. I'm walking it with you. So, the, you know, when we're looking at this opportunity for healing, it's, you know, what if it's not so much about what the other person did or said, but more about how we feel about it, right? Like, what is triggering us? Why? Getting curious with ourselves. Why did that particular word or action or thing make us so upset? So to get curious in a way of gentle curiosity, of compassionate curiosity, to look at and be aware, and this is where we can incorporate mindfulness, right? Noticing, ah, with a little bit of space, that person did or said something such. I started to have a swirl in my belly, perhaps a, a rise, a tingling of energy up my spine, and then all of a sudden things went ee! And that is where we can witness and become aware of what perhaps may be some of those core wounds, those triggers. So as humans, we have these buttons that can be pushed. <laughs> and we get our buttons pushed. Often, sometimes certain people, they have really learned exactly where those buttons are. Those that often love us the most know exactly where to go. But the thing to remember is that they didn't install those buttons, right? So although we, our buttons may be triggered or pushed by others, being aware of them allows us the opportunity to be gentle with ourselves and to practice active compassion and curiosity and mindfulness to be aware of what is my work to do 
What is my healing to be done? And there's many different resources for this, right? So we come together in community to talk about these things so we don't feel so alone. So we can know, oh, this is a common experience. But the deeper work occurs often in our own spiritual practice or working with a therapist or a licensed spiritual practitioner, doing a workshop, doing a class, calling someone that you really trust that can help you see clearly and do some of this work around that which needs to be healed, some of that inner child stuff, right? And I want to be clear that what has happened in our lives, that it's, it's not our fault, right? It's not like we brought on a situation that was traumatic or abusive. It's not our fault what has occurred, and nor is it okay what has occurred. But where we have the opportunity, the responsibility, the choice, is how, what we're going to do with that information, right? What, what, how are we going to respond to that old wound or trigger? And we get to decide the meaning we're going to make of it. Are we going to make it mean that we are bad or unworthy? Or are we going to look at that and state our truth and our wholeness no matter what else is occurring? And often these things happen at such a young age where we don't even have the cognitive ability to understand that it's not our fault. Right? There's this kind of like psychological thing that occurs in young children that when chaos is occurring around us in our family life or whatever it may be, that it's instead of um, being able to understand the complexity of the dynamics of the relationships, we make it mean I am bad or I am somehow wrong. And if I'm wrong, then I can change my behavior or be quiet or not say something or, or hide or whatever to make everything okay again. And then as we begin to heal as adults, we get to what some may call reparent ourselves and go back and talk to that young child and let them know that we are safe, that it's okay now, that we are here for them and that it's not your fault. And then allow the infinite love of life itself to pour forth and to comfort that little one. Now that we know better, right? Because we have a greater understanding and can remind ourselves of that truth and wholeness. One of our core principles here is that we are the creative genius of our lives. We get to co-create and work with this divine essence and presence and principle, call it God, life, spirit, universe, to allow the love to pour forth and to heal and dissolve all old wounds. The past is not bound by, spirit is not bound by precedence or the past, right? So the past has no power over us right now in this moment if we choose to know that and to say that and to claim that and then move forward with gentleness, with loving kindness for ourselves and others. Because it is with this awareness of the gentleness that we are cultivating that we get to redefine any aspect of our life at any time. Isn't that amazing? Like, what a great gift, right? That we are not held to the things that have happened in the past, that every moment is a new moment for things to be made new, to be transformed in this moment with what we know now. 
So let's just stop beating ourselves up, okay, y'all? Let's just stop beating ourselves up for the mistakes in the past, the, the previous bad relationships or experiences or the things that may have happened in the past that perhaps we have attached a little bit to and says, well, that's just who we are, right? That's who I am or I do it this way or I am that. If it's something that is not serving the highest and best for who you are becoming, perhaps it's time to let it go. And we can. We are always given a new opportunity for life to express itself anew through us. And the more we can love ourselves and who we are and accept ourselves just as we are, the more that that love starts to show up in our relationships with others. So this is how life is a mirror. We become the proof that love itself exists. Our relationships are proof that you love you. So Centers for Spiritual Living has this wonderful program for teens. And it's a, a summer teen camp that occurs. Um, there's regional camps in the winter, but there's this one big camp out in, well, it used to be in California, and now it's in Oregon because Centers for Spiritual Living, we have bought land and have a camp in, in Oregon. And there is a practice there, a ritual called Love Awards. Marianne, you know, she has been, uh, uh, you were on the music team, right? And uh, you were there when they did the labyrinth. So there is a, a labyrinth that is created on this land at the camp, um, and it is beautiful. So this practice of love awards is, goes along with this beautiful song. And there's these little things. They're usually like little like beaded bracelets or, you know, little like trinkety craft things. And the idea is that at the kind of every general session we come together, it'll be time for love awards. And we sing this song and you can take a love award and you find someone out there that you want to, and you pull them up on stage and you sing to them and you exchange a love award. And the, these love awards are just floating throughout camp the whole time. I bring this up because the words of this song are life-changing. So I'm going to give you this little chant. Ready? I love myself so much so I can love you so much so you can love you so much and you can start loving me. Right? I love myself so much so that I can love you so much that then you can love yourself so much that you can start loving me. That's profound, y'all. That is profound. <sighs> I was listening to, let's see if I can remember now this morning, the uh, Indigo Girls, one of my favorites, and um, there was this lyric, and I'm like, yes, that's it. It says this. Okay, hold on. It's coming. Once something about learn to love ourselves, we can dissolve all the stones that are cast. So when you, that's it, when you learn to love yourself, you will dissolve all the stones that are cast. Love really is the answer, y'all. <laughs> and it can seem trite at times, but it is deep. It is deeply healing. So people are going to people. And there's many ways to people as there are people, right? There's many ways to live life as there are people in this world. So that's like six plus billion, I think, at this point. Different ways of living life. And yet we get upset when someone doesn't live life exactly the way that we do or we think they should. So isn't it interesting, right? that we are living in this world with this great opportunity to learn to accept ourselves and others. Because truly, there are no others. For we are one 
There is one life, one thing happening right here, right now, this one divine expression showing up uniquely in six billion different ways, not to mention all the other species and creatures and, pl and plants and animals that are showing up uniquely expressing this thing called life. So, of course, we're all going to experience it and express it differently, and that is the very gift and beauty of life itself. Learning to love and accept ourselves. This is when we must uh, apply compassion and grace and gentleness. A compassion to ourselves, while we may not like what perhaps we did or said or how we showed up in a particular moment, we can understand that part of being human is making mistakes. So active compassion for others leads to this deeper understanding. And compassion doesn't mean, again, that people get this free reign to treat you however they want, if it's harmful, right? But it does mean that we have a full understanding right, that we seek to know the f bigger picture, to shift our perspective, perhaps, to something greater. And compassion is what opens that space, right? You agree. <laughs> when the dog agrees, you know that D-O-G-G-O-D -G -G is talking. That's right. <laughs> Compassion creates that space ah, to allow that opening for love to come through. The Dalai Lama said, the moment, you de uh, the moment you develop a sense of concern for others, you realize that, just like yourself, they also want happiness and they also want satisfaction. So active compassion requires awareness and intention and practice. This mindful awareness, practicing accepting others as they are. And when we decide to let the people in our lives truly be themselves and love them for who they are, that is how we can practice gentleness, loving kindness. And it requires that giant within us, right, requires us to kind of rise into this giant gentleness. And not only for others, but for ourselves. To love and accept ourselves, we must practice loving and accepting others just as they are. And it doesn't mean we have to like everyone. Thank goodness, right? <laughs> but we can appreciate that people are people and they're peopling the way that they best know how to people. And it may not be the kind of way that we want to be around. So we can notice that and acknowledge that and choose to consciously curate our own lives by those we bring into our inner circle that are supporting us in understanding this presence of love, right? to bring those into our lives. And I'm not saying just those that are easy to get along with, right? But bring those into our lives that may challenge us, that may push those buttons, but there is an underlying uh, intention of love and support, right? So if there's that base of love, then no matter what occurs, we can go there and we can do the healing and support each other in knowing the truth of who we are. Science of mind teaches oneness, right? That there is one energy in a myriad of forms, individualized expressions of the one divine presence. So each and every one of us is sacred and holy. The other person, the other thing or place, is none other than 
an expression of love as well. Because there is and cannot be anything against us in spirit. It just is. We get to decide. We get to make the meaning. Dr. Ernest Holmes says, love is kind, gentle, and understanding. It is tolerant of others and reaches back through indifference and coldness to life, to something warm and pulsating that is at the very center of everything. I love that quote because it's so visual. I'm visual, right? So I can, I can see like the external form of a being that may be cold, right? Uh, put on the persona of indifference and cold, but within that being, within all beings, is still a warmth of love pulsating at the center. So when we can see past that and tap into that pulsating love, it's like that fire. And when those flames come together, it expands. Love meets love. With time, with space, we can gain a greater clarity and perspective, right? Just like when you're on top, like ants. And sometimes it's this perspective that we need in our own life and relationships, that when we get right up and we're so in it, it feels so much more difficult to see the opportunity for healing and to remember the love that is there. But when we can have a little bit of that space and are open to a new perspective, then we can see more clearly. Loving and respecting ourselves mean, means being clear on what works for us and what doesn't. Loving and respecting ourselves gives us the space to figure that out when it's not clear. Taking our thoughts and feelings and reactions into meditation and contemplation. Using our practices such as spiritual mind treatment. Working with a licensed counselor, journaling, taking a walk in nature. These are a few of the tools that we have in our toolbox to lean into to gain that perspective and that clarity when things are feeling just a little too close and intense. And honestly, we could all probably use a little lightening up, right? Oh, I know I can tend to take things so seriously and, you know, it's, it's easy when we're in this heightened time in the world as well and where we have access to see so many things that are occurring in the world. It could be like, well, how can you not take this seriously? Like, look at what is occurring in the world. What do you mean? What if we do not allow ourselves the space to be playful and joyful and open our hearts to the silliness of who we are, then we're just going to get caught up in what's happening and not be able to make a difference. Being in that place of joy and love in the midst of the trauma and the pain may seem like chaotic from the outside, but it's perfectly human. And it's how we remember who we are and not forget by getting too in it. The joy and the love and the peace is always there. And another great reminder from Ernest Holmes, none of us is, a perfect, is as perfect an expression as we ought to be. <laughs> So the challenge to each of us is to be great enough to rise in love, in charity, through understanding and compassion. Yes. So let us take a deep breath. 
as we wrap this up with this idea that recognizing our oneness with each other can give us that introspection and awareness of our own judgments that is being reflected in our relationships, right? So loving ourselves is loving the other, and loving the other is loving ourselves. Mm. So I invite you this week to consider how can you be more gentle with yourself and with those in your life this week? And let's keep this gentle energy going and growing as we become these beautiful, gentle giants. Yes? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's take it into prayer. <laughs> good it is to recognize that right here, right now, love is. Peace is. Freedom is. Wholeness is. This is the very essence and truth of the universe. Love, peace, freedom, wholeness. This love of the infinite that is expressed infinitely through each of us. So we have this opportunity right here, right now, to remember who we are. Love is, I am. Peace is, I am. And from this place of oneness, of wholeness, I speak this word now on behalf of the collective, knowing that freedom and joy and harmony and peace and compassion is activated within my being now that I can call upon that deep well, that I can tap into that warm, loving spot that is that hot, white fire, passion of joy, of creativity, that is the very essence of who I am. So I allow this to be sourced from within and to expand through my heart, through my words, through my intentions, through my actions, through my deeds, through all that I do, particularly in my interactions with the other, knowing that our relationships, whether they be intimate relationships or whether they be a fleeting moment with a stranger, that all of these interactions are opportunities to see and to know this love more fully. To witness and to express the holy holiness and the wholeness of all of life. To accept myself and others just as we are showing up and just as we are not showing up. To accept life and to trust in the infinite intelligence of this divine wisdom through us that everything is unfolding perfectly. So I trust and I allow and I accept and I let go. Ooh, I let go with great gratitude for the fulfillment of this prayer. I let go with the complete awareness and understanding that my word is never returned void. I am grateful to remember who I am. I am grateful to love and accept 
accept myself right here, right now. And I'm especially grateful for all of those mirrors showing up right now to reflect back to me who I am. And all of those sacred opportunities to know love more fully. To know love in the midst of chaos. To know love right here, right now. I am grateful. And I say yes. And I choose life. I choose love. <sighs> so with great gratitude, I now release this word into the action of the law. That law that always says yes, 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 my beloved. It is done and it is so. And so it is. that's fine just turn to someone now and say I accept you just as you are it's okay if you don't even know them it's probably easier that way <laughs> oh yes beautiful so now we're going to move into our time of conscious giving uh, we're gonna the core council will pass a basket in the room uh, but there's many ways you can give online as well you can text the word give to 859-209-6996 you can go to our website as well ahavacenter.com or net slash give and if you're online that would be the easiest way to find our website and donate there as well. So we like to do this together by affirming and knowing. So I invite you to maybe take your offering, your phone or whatever, your heart, your love in your hands, bless it over your heart and say, divine love as me, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give and all that I receive. I joyously contribute to the vision of Ahava, knowing it returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so 
it is. God is my source, God is my power, God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks, so all my blessings, God gives me everything I need. God gives me everything I need. Love is my source, love is my source, love is my power. Love gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. Love gives me everything I need. God is my source. God is my power. God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks. So I give thanks. mentioned earlier this class starts tomorrow so please go ahead and sign up in advance um, we have some fundraisers coming up as well with uh, raising canes on April 21st so that's next Sunday Wow next Sunday uh, go and eat some raising canes any of the four locations and 15% will be coming back to Ahava and we are also supporting the work of the Mitchells uh, and their work with the homeless with those donations that come through there and we're planning those that want to gather in fellowship to go up the road to raising canes for lunch after service next week make sure you mention the fundraiser and share with all your friends if they like chicken Go and eat the chicken. And they'll say, chicken, chicken, chicken. What combo are you picking? <laughs> <laughs> and we have T-shirts for sale. We have our new Ahava, Be Kind, Be Loved, Be Ahava shirts. They're available in the bookstore. And Alois? Found, okay, great. Alois found something, great. We have returned that to the rightful owner. <laughs> um, and... The last Sunday of the month, we have a special guest. Do we have a slide about that? I'm not sure if it was in there or not. Okay, I'll just tell you. So get ready, y'all. Next week, chicken. The week after that, Amy Steinberg. Woo! Yes. Amy is going to be singing, doing all the music, and speaking. She is a uh, m master creative genius and has been in the New Thought movement for many years bringing her music and she's currently in ministerial uh, school as well and cool. looks forward to the opportunity to speak with you all. I'm going to be at a conference in Chicago. I may be able to get back late Saturday night. I'm not exactly sure what time my workshop is Saturday, but she will be here with you all. I just have a little FOMO because I love Amy. And so if I'm able to be here, I will be. She also is going to have some of her um, art and creative goodies for sale. She, if you follow her, if not, you will want to. Go find her on social media. She's been making these new uh, diva tees, she calls them, with upcycled, recycled clothing, w shirts with cool phrases, and then they have all these other patterns, and it's, you can wear it like this. Yeah. No, you know, it is, it is non-binary. Everyone can express their gender they're, uh, they are, they're diva, inner diva is what I'm trying to say, through her diva tees. So she's going to be a blast, and um, we have some fun things coming up in the next couple weeks. So let us now have another opportunity to experience. Is that a good laid up? The one and only. Marianne, take it away.
gonna feel real good gonna make a difference gonna make it right as i turn up the collar on my favorite winter coat this wind is blowing my mind i see the kids in the street without enough to eat who am i to be blind pretending not to see them a summer's disregard, a broken bottle top, and a one-man soul. They follow each other on the wind, you know, cause they got nowhere to go. That's why I want you to know, I'm starting with a man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change. Take your looks yourself and make a change. Na 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 na. I've been a victim of a selfish kind of love. It's time that I realize there is some with no home, not a nickel to loan. Could it be really me? Pretending that they're not alone A willow deeply scarred Somebody's broken heart And a washed out dream They follow the pattern of the wind you see Cause they got no place to be That's why I'm starting with me I'm starting with a him to change his ways and no message could have been any clearer if you want to make the world a better place take a look at yourself and make the change na 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 today guys I find prosperity in nature yes <laughs> and you want to share our craft with us uh we um took sand dollars and we colored them I colored mine of my favorite colors Beautiful. and it was uh, to go with the story that she told yeah we learned about how I had a personal experience in on the beach when I went on spring break and there were these mm -hmm. um I could never find shells and sand dollars unless they were broken. And it was the Easter sunrise service. And um, afterwards, I was on the beach early, and I'd never been there really early because I'm not a Florida girl, not a beach girl. I'm more of a mountain girl. And so there was all this seaweed, and I didn't even know what it was. And I'm walking along, and that's where you find the good shells. Yes. Okay, buddy. They hide in the seashells. And... I was having a moment, and I found the sand dollar, and I was so excited, and I gave it all this meaning, and I said, oh, my gosh, it means I'm going to have a great year, and it's going to be <laughs> prosperous, and all these amazing things are going to happen, and then I put it in my pocket, and then we're traipsing on down, and Ryan finds the sand dollar, and I'm like, oh, we both got one. Double the blessings. This is great, and I'm so excited, and I pull my sand dollar out of my pocket, and I don't know if you guys know what happens to sand dollars because I didn't know, and it crumbled. And so then there goes my story. And I made up a bad story. And I said, oh, my gosh, I'm not going to have the things that I want. And I'm not going to be able to do what I need to do. And it's just not going to be good. And 
oh, the house keeps flooding and it's just awful and you know what we do. And then me and Ryan got into like a little bit of a hissy fit and he went one way and I went the other way on the beach. And then what happened was I started talking to God because that's what I do because God's my best friend. So I started talking to God and I said, you know, I could really use a sand dollar right now. <laughs> I've been looking everywhere and I can't find another sand dollar and I could really use one. And I had literally just been digging in that seaweed. And I looked down and there was a sand dollar sitting on top of the seaweed. It was like God just placed it there for me. And I picked it up and I put it in a nice special compartment this time. So it wasn't in my pocket, it was in a bag. And I was like, this will keep it safe. And then I'm walking along the beach and then I forget about God again. And I think, I cracked the code. They're in the seaweed. I can get my own sand dollars. I don't need God. So I leave God back there with the other one. And I'm digging in the seaweed. And sure enough, there's, there's sand dollars there. And I reach down and I grab it. And it just crumbles in my hand. Mm. <laughs> and I realize, I left God back there. Mm. Nothing I want is out here. Mm -hmm. And everything I want is back there. Mm -hmm. oh. So the perfect sand dollar was with God. And the broken sand dollars were when I kept leaving them behind. And that was the lesson that I learned. Mm -hmm. And so that's the beauty of the sand dollar. And yes. so it was so perfect that I came in today and Heather was like, we're going to learn about sand dollars. And I was like, I have the perfect story. <laughs> so I was so excited. Yes. Spirit knows what it's doing, y'all. That's right. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, beautiful young ones that are... <laughs> very true life we were having blueberries for breakfast and noticing how some were tart some were mushy some were meh and you know life's like a box of blueberries she said you never know what you're going to get that's true so many little nuggets today right mm -hmm. between the blueberries and the sand dollars and when i was at the conference uh, uh in south carolina recently i found a perfect sand dollar on the beach and i had a moment with it and i and i noticed myself like wanting to like oh this is beautiful and perfect i want to keep this and then i was willing to say you know what i'm going to release my attachment and I threw it back in the ocean and let it be a gift and releasing and not attachment. So lessons are everywhere. And so again, it's not like there's a right or a wrong. There's the moment that we have in each moment that is right for us to discover what it is to discover. So, okay, y'all, I think we're filled up. So um, we have Marianne here today to offer prayer. Um, you can find her over there. You can leave a prayer in the prayer box or get some in-person prayer. And now I invite you just to stand and to repeat after me. Something wonderful is happening to me right now. Something wonderful is happening to me right now. It's this thing called life. Life is in my mind. Life is in my body. Life is in my affairs. I accept it. I am it. I share it. Just the way it appears. Just the way it appears. And just the way it appears not. Just the way it appears not. Thank you, life. Life. All right, let's sing it out. One, two, three, four. I release and I let go. I let. time I release 
and I let go. I let the Spirit from my life, and my heart is open wide. This time, only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my Um...